The United States is the largest exporter of apples in the world. In January 1995, Japan approved the importation of apples from the US. But are these American apples safe to eat? We repeated investigations three times in Washington, America's premier apple growing region. There we witnessed appalling scenes of pesticide application. Pouring over these freshly harvested apples is a pesticide called thiabendazole. It is a strongly toxic fungicide. Studies with pregnant mice at the Tokyo Metropolitan Hygiene Laboratory demonstrated that thiabendazole can cause extensive deformity of legs or ribs in fetuses. Such a deadly poison is pouring down like rain on apples. The truck is moved forward to ensure that the pesticide thoroughly drenches it. This process goes on for about 20 minutes. After the shower, the truck is rinsed with water to remove the pesticide. However, the apples are not. Following this truck, we are going to disclose the truth about pesticide application to American apples. This is the facility processing apples for storage and shipment. Thiobendazole is applied after harvest to store the products for a long time. This type of chemical is called a post-harvest pesticide. Post-harvest pesticides are known to remain from a few times to several hundred times more than pesticides used before harvest. That's why apples coated with thiobendazole can be stored for as long as eight months. When apples are shipped out after such long periods of storage, they are further processed with pesticides. First, they are dumped into a tank of chlorinated water. Then the apples are sprayed again with thiobendazole. Japanese regulations prohibit the post-harvest use of thiobendazole, but it is still allowed in the United States. Unknown pesticides are repeatedly applied while the apples are tumbled around. Next comes the wax spray. This means that the pesticides on apples are well sealed by wax to persist until we eat the apples. Sometimes pesticides are even mixed into the wax. Next, infrared light dries the surface. Finally, defective apples are screened out and processed for juice, jam, and so on. That means that not only the crunchy apples we bite into, but also all the apples crushed for juice and preserves are doused in pesticides first. People around the world, even Americans, are unaware of these facts. Here is conservationist Larry Landis, who first revealed these problems. What you're seeing in this film is the dark side of agriculture. It was difficult to make because these are trade secrets. This is a short-term benefit. 
uh, profits only a few, and there would be no benefit to mankind from this activity. It's very tough to obtain evidence of post-harvest pesticide application. We investigated the safety of Philippine pineapples produced on Mindanao Island. It began with the sudden cancellation of the appointment we had with the management. Two security guards armed with machine guns keep watch over the area. The pesticide treatment area is surrounded by barbed wire. We drove along outside that area, but cartons were piled up to block the view from the outside. After five o'clock, when the night shift began, we got a chance to peer inside. Pink t-shirt and uh, yellow hat? Yeah, yeah. Finally, we were able to film them dipping pineapples into the pesticide. We confirmed this pesticide was a fungicide called Triadimifon. This fungicide has been banned by United States Federal Court in California because it's suspected of causing cancer. What about the health of the workers who have to handle this pesticide? We found their skins are inflamed with severe rashes over the back and arms. This lady told us that about 20% of the workers suffer from skin rash or respiratory troubles. The Central American country, Costa Rica, is one of the largest exporters of bananas. Bananas are a great favorite of children. But behind such popular imagery, American big business is applying power for its own benefits. A man with a rope pulls a long train of bananas. Women neatly remove the flower buds. Then bunches are sliced off into a water pool. Damaged or undersized bananas are separated out and dumped into the ocean. Bananas that have passed the screening are put into a second pool. We found that this pool contained a fungicide called Benamil. Benamil is a well-known carcinogen. The United States Superior Court has banned the use of this chemical. The green chemical Benamil constantly flows from a plastic bag. Bananas are removed with bare hands. After weighing, they are sprayed with an insecticide. Tests at the Tokyo Metropolitan Laboratory have repeatedly detected Benamil and Chlorpyrifos both inside the skin and fruit of bananas. After labeling, insecticides are again sprayed. Then finally the bananas are packaged. Throughout these treatments, all the workers go unprotected, without masks or gloves. Are they suffering any ill effects? We visited another major banana producer on Mindanao in the Philippines. The liquid in this pool was just water. Screened bananas were wiped with soap and rinsed. Up to this stage, these bananas seem to be safer than those in Costa Rica. But the harsh fact is that 10 to 20% of the workers are suffering from severe skin or respiratory disorders. We discovered that the carcinogenic fungicide Benamil is spread right after the bananas are weighed, here as well as in Costa Rica. The pesticide residue remains not only on the peel, but also inside the fruit and so the bananas can be kept from readily spoiling. 
Moreover, many international companies continue to replace banned pesticides with new ones that are similarly toxic. Wearing no gloves at all, the workers labor right near the spray in the Philippines. We talked with members of an organization for improvement of the working environment. Their spokesperson has this request. Agricultural chemicals are widely used for massive production of agricultural product. I would like to request to the importing countries like Japan to be strict in its policy and regulation because it has adverse effect to the health of the workers and to the environment. People often consume the whole fruit of oranges in marmalade and juice, where the skin and fruit are all processed together. This time we succeeded in filming the inner workings of a California processing plant. The oranges are first brushed and sterilized. A fungicide is then sprayed on. While oranges travel along a long line, a wide variety of fungicides are applied. For instance, orthophenylphenol is used to prevent the white fungus, and imazalil and thiobendazole against the green fungus. After hot air is blown over the fruit, a mixture of wax and fungicide is applied to them. After coating with layers of pesticides, oranges with defects are sorted out for juice and preserves, as we saw with apples. Hundreds of times more residues were detected on the skin than inside the fruit. Juice is made from unpeeled fruits, and so it naturally contains a great amount of residues. California cherries are processed differently depending on whether they are for domestic use or for export to Japan. Cherries for export to Japan are treated for preservation from decay and insects. This is a packing house for domestic consumption. Here cherries are sprayed seven times, the last two times with pesticides. First, a fungicide is applied. This plastic strip is all the workers are given for protection from the spray. Cherries that do not meet the standard are sorted out for jams and other processed foods. Right before packing, another fungicide is applied. Cherries are always eaten unpeeled, so the toxic residues must have serious health effects. In this facility for export to Japan, methyl bromide is used to kill insects. However, the use of fungicides after harvest of cherries is banned in Japan. Nevertheless, a pesticide is further applied right before packing here in California. We obtained evidence that cherries are dropped in a fungicide called iprodion. The producing companies have claimed that no post-harvest pesticide is applied to the cherries exported to Japan. But chemical analyses in Japan always detect much higher levels of residue in American cherries than Japanese ones. The American application instructions state that you should soak cherries in pesticide but not rinse before packaging. We were curious as to how long these American cherries would last. So we kept them at room temperature in July and August. Even after seven weeks, no fungus has grown at all. Are these cherries really edible? Staples like potatoes and grain require a secure supply throughout the year. If even a little pesticide remains in these foods, then we would be consuming a lot of the toxin year after year. Post-harvest pesticides are not the only problem. Usually the fields before harvest are lovely and green. But the pre-harvest potato fields that we saw were miserably desolated. 
No leaf or even stem was alive. This is true for all Western countries. The cause of such thorough devastation is herbicides, which are spread just to make harvesting easier. This kind of chemical is called a harvest aid pesticide. Herbicides completely destroy the natural environment. Moreover, since such chemicals are applied right before harvest, huge amounts of residue stay on potatoes till we eat them. In an American potato field, farmers showed us how pesticides are used prior to harvesting. The chemical sprayed here is Vapam. Because it's a suspected carcinogen, in Japan its manufacturer has withdrawn its registration. Vapam blocks budding and decay in potatoes. It also works as a weed control agent. Europe is famous for its potatoes, which are widely consumed as a staple food. We made field surveys on the safety of potatoes in England, Switzerland and Germany. This farmer is sprinkling powder with his bare hands. This powder is a germination inhibitor. This yellow bag contains a herbicide CIPC, which causes skin cancer in mice. Yet such a strong toxin is being carelessly handled by farmers. We found this germination inhibitor is widely used in storage as well as in the fields. We cannot overlook the fact that post-harvest pesticide is toxic enough to inhibit germination. In an underground warehouse, stored potatoes are coated with brown powder, which is the pesticide. CIPC is provided in various forms, as powder, liquid, or gas. Professionals fumigate potatoes repeatedly whenever they start sprouting. The residue of this CIPC has been detected in Japan from imported frozen potatoes, potato chips and fried potatoes served at fast food outlets. Australia is one of the largest agricultural exporters. Insecticides are used there to stock wheat over long time periods. Right after harvest, wheat is transferred to storage through yellow pipes. An organophosphate pesticide, phenytrothion, is kept in a blue container attached to the pipe. Sprinkle light? Yep. Enough? Yep. Yep. When the machine starts up, pesticide is mixed with the wheat. Consequently, phenytrothion resides in the wheat and in any products made from the wheat till we eat them. In the United States, another pesticide, chlorpyrifos, has been used for the same purpose. What effects could these pesticides have on the human body? Let's listen to Professor Mikio Miata of Kitasato University who is the worldwide expert on this issue. Cedar pollen was applied to the eyes of mice suffering from hay fever, and slight conjunctivitis occurred, as shown here by the light blue color. Then we fed them a very little organophosphate pesticide. We confirm that the pesticide drastically enhances the allergic conjunctivitis, as indicated by the dark blue color. The dose given was the same as people eat in a single meal with a pesticide contamination of 0.01 parts per million. We bought samples of bread in several countries. Analysis showed that about 30% of them were contaminated with organophosphate pesticides at a level of 0.01 parts per million.
It is now evident that in many countries, post-harvest pesticides are applied to a variety of agricultural products. Knowing this, you may feel that no food is safe anymore these days. But this is not true. There are many ways to improve the safety of bananas and potatoes. We just need to stop using post-harvest pesticides. It is vital for us to promote such practices. Bananas imported from Taiwan spoiled easily, but their reputation for great taste was unequaled. In the Banana Research Center in Taiwan, an agronomist, Dr. Yun Pen Sai, discovered pesticides that prevent bananas from spoilage. However, he did not use them. Those two types of pesticides showed the best performance, but they are banned by the Japanese Ministry of Health and Welfare. So we decided not to use them. He continued his research and strove to develop a method that satisfied Japanese regulations. Here, alum is being put into water pools. Dr. Tsai's group discovered that their spoilage can be prevented if the banana tree sap from the cut is washed out with alum. The bananas are then rinsed with water to be shipped. Compared with bananas from Costa Rica and the Philippines, Taiwanese bananas are clearly much safer without post-harvest pesticides. How about potatoes? We've already shown their pesticide problems. We learned a lot of new ideas at the Potato Expo held in England in 1994. Without herbicides, potato plants remain alive and green in the field. It may look difficult to harvest potatoes. However, just by attaching a weed cutter to the front of the harvester, it's possible to harvest efficiently and easily. After harvesting, a natural sprouting retardant can be used. It is called carvon extracted from caraway seeds. Comparison tests have demonstrated that Carvon's overall effectiveness is superior to the herbicide CIPC. Cargill and Zenno Grain have started to export chicken feed corn with no post-harvest pesticide applied. The cost differential in using such grain is only one cent per egg. It is vital that every one of us on this planet can enjoy a safe diet every day. To make this a reality, international organizations should provide strict standards for applications of pesticides and food additives. On January the 1st, 1995, the World Trade Organization was established. Under this agreement, we cannot reject the importation of agricultural products that comply with international regulations. Some of the regulations allow the use of post-harvest pesticides. All of us throughout the world need to speak up loud and clear to make the WTO eliminate all post-harvest pesticide usage. In 1990, we succeeded in filming the actual scenes of spreading post-harvest pesticides on lemons in the United States. Lemons are sprayed with 2,4-D. 2,4-D is a major component of the deadly toxin which was used to defoliate the jungle in the Vietnam War. These lemons are in storage for as long as six months. When shipped out to markets, the lemons are further sprayed with two different fungicides, orthophenylphenol and thiabendazole. They are known to cause cancers or fetal deformity. Since our film demonstrated this fact, those lemons have been in poor demand. Nowadays, instead, we can easily find post-harvest pesticide-free lemons in grocers' shops. What is most important for us now is to learn how the food is treated on its way to our dining tables.
I hope that you now understand the dreadful facts of post-harvest pesticides. The first step to solve this problem is to tell your friends about what you have just seen in this film. Once many people share the knowledge of such facts and begin to actively choose safer food, the situation will rapidly improve.